right, so uh, good. Nobody, nobody sit over here anymore. I quit talking over there. Um, so uh, I just retired. Uh, as a matter of fact, my paycheck stops in 11 days. So Boo! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for your tax dollars in the last 21 years. It's been great. Um, you know, it, it was funny when I joined the Navy. Uh, my family didn't want me to join. They, you know, they, oh, you, you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't do it. Uh, and then it became the you shouldn't ever get out. And then when I was getting ready to retire, everybody was very happy for me, which was a nice change of pace. Um, my sister and I, we didn't really get along growing up. And, uh, and, and so she's been very supportive. She's been really biggest fan of this whole thing and me kind of just doing whatever I want, which is nice because growing up, she uh, she had really, really bad news for us. And she had to be put on medication for it. And when it was her time of the month, we would fight. Uh, and she was bigger and stronger than me. Uh, I was the weakling of the house. And, and she would beat me up. I would have to go to the hospital. I would be bleeding you know, more than she was. And it was really bad. And so, uh, over time, you know, it, it's been nice because the medicine has really, really helped her out, right? She, the mood swings are gone. Uh, and now she's just, she's always a cunt. And so, <laughs> she, uh, she, she's great. She loves that joke, actually. Um, she does. <laughs> um, her and I have been going through an identity crisis as of late. Um, so my, my dad died uh, shoot, five, six years ago. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Anybody have a, a terrible dad? <laughs> terrible dad crap. Um, he wasn't great. Uh, and we used to be Italian. And I say we used to be Italian because until 23 and me came around, we were Italian. <laughs> and the Eugene Levy eyebrows and the, the Robin Williams hairy arms were described by, oh, you're just Italian. You know, you're... Your great grandfather, uh, Frank Martino, here's a picture of him coming off of the boat. Frank Martino. And he named his son Marvin, who thought it was such a good idea he would name his son, my dad, Marvin. Uh, thank God it missed. Uh, but we're apparently Peruvian. Uh, and I don't even know, like, I can't. I can't talk like this anymore. <laughs> it's been really hard for me. And I was talking to my mom, and I said, you know, what, what's your genealogy? And she goes, well, you know, you saw you're related to Jesse James. I said, sure, you know, that's her lineage or whatever. I said, that's not real proud. And she goes, well, you're also 80% uh, Neanderthal. Like, it shows where you, and she's wow. like, that's the eyebrows and the arms. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so that was nice to have my mom call me, basically. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, leaving the going back to the Navy stuff, right? With leaving the Navy, uh, it's it's this whole big medical process. Uh, I tried to stay away from going to the doctor most of my career, to my own detriment. Um, but when you join the Navy, uh, you go to this place called MEX. It's a processing center to get, and this is everybody. It's a whole military goes through, right? And you go through this whole thing, and they make you like walk like a duck. They make you throw your arms out like this. Uh, and at the end of all of this, it's a long, it's like being an extra. You're there forever. You're there all day. They put you in a Ramada Inn, if that still exists, uh, 20 years ago they did. Um, and, and at the end of the day, there's a doctor, an old man, I don't know, he's, a, he's an old man in a room. And he says, drop your pants and bend over and grab your ankles. And I'm like, this is a weird initiation. And he, and he doesn't touch you. It's like this really weird, like, it's just, it's too much, right? So you're, you're bent over, you're, I'm, I'm 18, I'm barely legal, and he's getting, like, dangerously close with his eye to, it's like, if, if my butthole had a retina, he locked eyes with the retina. <laughs> and he says, you're, you're good. It's okay. So then when you leave, it's like this, this really long 21 year courting process where they're like, okay, bend over and grab your ankles. I'm like, oh, this again. And then they don't warn you and they have to check to make sure the elasticity is still there. Uh, it is terrifying. It's the, the worst experience. And I try to tell people, like, the Navy's not gay. And stuff like that happens. It's really hard to explain in this room. Um, so. When you go to, uh, you know, when you go to boot camp, you start out, 
you're there with some other people, and they always pair you up with someone who, you know, they might not be processing at the same speed as everybody else. And I had this guy next to me, like, you got to help him out. So, like, we went to pick out our new clothes. You had to, you know, uh, whatever size you were. He's like, I don't know what size I am. This guy's huge. I mean, he's just the biggest guy I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, you're at least a double XL, right? And so you get to this point where you strip clothes, and you've, you've dumped everything out of your pockets, and you only take what the recruiter tells you to bring, right? It's very limited stuff. Back in the day, we didn't have cell phones, so I wouldn't have there. And uh, this guy pulls out of his pocket 20 condoms. Whoa. Magnum. And he, he does, I saw it later. It's very impressive. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so he lays these 20 condoms down, and I looked at him and I said, We're only here 60 days. He said, Yeah, I said, Who did you think you'd be fucking for a third of those days? <laughs> like, it's all guys. It's all of us. Like, and, you know, so he, you know, they, he, he ended up being a really good guy. He's like our top recruit. It was really funny. But, um, I, I move on. We were talking about uh, people changing, right? You were talking about your dad and, and changing throughout his life. I grew up in uh, small square states. My dad was a pie planter. Uh, and my first roommate in the Navy was a gay Vietnamese guy. And this is not, I, I'm going to preface this with, this is not a joke about him being gay. This is a joke about me being like a red hat short of storming the Capitol, right? Like this is, uh, and not anymore. It's a long time ago. And uh, we, we were still under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And uh, I, I, was, I was like, I'm pretty sure this guy's gay. And he's like, nah, you know, I'm going to go to the club. And I'm like, cool, can I go with you? He's like, nah, you can't go with me. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, well, that's probably some Asian club. Because it was him and all of his Asian friends going. And, uh, and so I was like, you know, one night I was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check. I didn't have a computer. So I was like, I'm going to check out this dude's computer. I'm going to check out what he's got. He's got to have porn on there. And he's got this file, and I open it, it's like 200 and some pictures. I'm like, oh, these are going to be, right? So I click the first one, it's a very good-looking guy, right? Uh, very, I'm, you know, he's just not me. Very good. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what's the next picture, right? And so the next picture, he's like unbuttoned a button. And I'm like, ooh, where are we going with this? And I click the next picture. I'm like, all right, still just the guy, this girl coming up. And so 200 pictures later, no, I, it was picture by picture a guy jerking off. There were no girls. And I'm sure of it. And I, uh, I, I went to tell my boss. And I said, hey, you know, I've got to tell you what happened. And, and it's don't ask, don't tell. So I think this is very serious. And, uh, and so he's, oh my God, this is terrible. Uh, let's go tell our other boss. And I said, sure. So we, we go and tell him. And he says, yeah, you know, hey, we're going to take care of this right away. We, just, we can't have this in our Navy. So it's a bad idea. Hey, by the way, we're having a cookout at my house this weekend. Would you like to come? I said, sure, that'd be great. I was single living in the barracks. This would be great. Get some real food. I show up to the house. All three people that I've mentioned in the story are at the house. <laughs> and they're all on dates. <laughs> I'm the only one not, at, not on a date. And I am, there are no girls. <laughs> and I, I think to myself, I, I have definitely made a terrible mistake. And, and this was a great, I tell people, this is a great learning experience because had they reacted any other way, right, I may have been storming the Capitol. Uh, it showed me that, like, hey, you know, you don't, you don't have to fear people because they're different. You don't have to be, like, an idiot. Um, you know, and, and speaking of idiots, uh, the don't ask, don't tell was a, was a monumental failure. Right, uh, any men, sir, I don't care how you feel about it. Uh, we're 100% volunteer service. These people volunteer, whoever they are, right? We take everybody. Um, you, you go down to Florida and they have the don't say gay law. Right, this is crazy. Like my, my daughter was asking me about it. And I started thinking about it. I said, you know, the, part of it is like, if, if you're a child and you have gay parents, you can't tell at school that you have gay parents. Right, so so he said, little Timmy, what did you do this weekend? You go, oh, you know, my dad's uh, took me to the zoo. Oh no, little Timmy, you can't say your dad's. That's a bad. You can't do that. You can't know that gay people exist. <laughs> and, so so it becomes this very pro like alternative pronoun law where the kid is now like, oh my my parents, they they took me to the zoo. Oh, how was it? Oh, it was great. Uh, we all had a good time. <laughs> oh, did you do anything else? Oh, uh, no, no. We didn't have a lot of time after uh, my parents, they, 
got done blowing each other. <laughs> but, I didn't, but I didn't say. But I didn't say. <laughs> regular TV and it's these terrible commercials and it's it, it's all this stuff you know I, I think about like okay so Biden wrote the, uh, the the energy companies on Monday a letter that was like you're price gouging you're terrible people you better fix this we're not going to stand for it and on Friday he's riding his bicycle <laughs> if you really want to know who's running this company um, and so, but I just think to myself like all these commercials are like hey I'm running for like Clay County Commissioner and I'm pro Trump so you should vote for me what does that have to do with the county. And so now I picture this coming down like, you know, it, he's pro Huffy. <laughs> <laughs> Huffy would have kept biting on the bike. <laughs> you should be pro Schwinn. In case you know, and it's just the most ridiculous, it has nothing to do with people's qualifications. Um, and this is my favorite joke. I'm sorry. I had, uh, we, this is a true story. It's not a joke, but I like making it a joke. Uh, we were in Target the other day. Has anybody been to Target recently? So we were on just, we were doing camp supplies and all this other stuff. So we're in the medical aisles and we're going through and I, I always move ahead of Sarah because she's very slow and everything she does. And, um, and I'm less interested in being a target. So I'm looking around, I'm leaning on the car and looking up and she's on one aisle and I look up and there is a row of sex toys. In part, yeah, there are sex toys. <laughs> so, and I don't mean like, oh, this is a, this might be no, like there was the rabbit and the silver bullet and whatever else they called, and then like even for the guys, right, uh, uh, touching lights and, and uh, all this stuff. There's up that high, and uh, and I thought I I looked at it for a little bit. Now, that's not what Sarah. <laughs> stop doing what you're doing and come here. And so, I said, is that? Really? And she's like, yeah, I'm like, this is crazy, right? So you, you got, on one hand, you, you have Stitt being like, hey, abortions are bad, right? Don't do abortions, it's illegal. And oh, by the way, we're going to lock up the infamil, and we're going to lock up the condoms. So if you have a baby, I'm not going to help you. you got to go get help. Uh, I'm not going to help you by having condoms readily, but you got to go get help. And that's embarrassing. I don't know if you've ever been a guy trying to buy condoms. Like, that's, that's weird. Right? Hey, can you please come unlock this so I can go maybe have sex later? <laughs> uh, but those things are locked up. So if you have a baby, right, you gotta go ask for help. But just in case, you can go fuck yourself on aisle seven, right? Like just in case anybody can do it. So that, that's all I got. Thank you all. Woo! Casey, I have so many questions about your sex.